Hey, what's up? Uh, we are going to be looking at Cine Designer release one build number two, number two, two, two. Second build. We are about mm, about two to three weeks into Cine Designer being out, and I have been listening to the feedback. I've been watching and seeing what you guys have been making, and I have updated Cine Designer uh, because I said I would. Uh, so here we are, Cine Designer R1 build two. Looks about the same, uh, but we'll go through really quickly some of the new differences here. Um, so first of all, when you bring in any rig now, this I think this is for everything now. If you bring in like a tripod, for instance, you'll see that right away there's some little uh, differences here. One, no materials coming down here. So the my rigs, the Cine Designer rigs, they won't messy up your uh, material editor anymore because if you import like 30 stands or 30 lights, you get like a billion textures that gets in the way. So I got rid of that. Um, if you're more advanced in Cinema 4D and you want to know how, how that's happening, uh, you'll probably figure it out on your own. But if you just want to ignore it, you're not going to ever have to deal with the textures again, um, for the most part. So that's new. Also, I've updated all of the shaders. Not that you can select them or look at them, but um, all the shaders on these now are using Beckman for um, Specular. Because before I was using Legacy because I was going to back support um, as far as shaders and everything. Um, back support back to R15 and maybe even 14, but now moving forward, uh, we are only going to be supporting 17 really, uh, and 16 should work too, but basically by dropping support for 15, everything is now using this reflectance channel, I think is what it's called, uh, because that's the way forward. And uh, to be able to operate uh, Cine Designer correctly and to use it to its full potential, we need to be using the latest updates. So even when R18 comes out, uh, I'll probably be jumping right on that and just getting on top of the new features because it's all about new features. It's about making this faster and better for everybody. So um, secondly, over here, when you select our object, uh, everything is used to be under a thing called user controls. Now it's called CD controls, so Cine Designer controls. And everything will be in this, con um, this little tab called um, CD controls. So everything that is from Cine Designer should be called CD controls, and that's going to help me out later on as a developer to be able to go and say select, say you have 20 lights in your scene. Uh, I can select all those lights from the script eventually and say, give me the CD controls of those lights, and then I can start to control them for you. So if we have bigger scenes, you're going to want to be able to do stuff like that. I haven't implemented any grouping or large scale control of lights and cameras, um, but perhaps in the future. Uh, that's a little bit deeper once we get um, this stuff kind of sorted out. We're trying to we're kind of all evolving this together. So let's delete that camera. Let's go check out the lighting chart. Oh, let's bring in. Let's, let's bring, so for our photographers, now I still have very few cameras. I'm gonna add those later. Uh, let's bring in some of the new stuff. So if a Manfrotto head is new and the Phobus stand. Now this isn't gonna be for everybody, um, but if you are a professional studio photographer, which there are uh, actually more than more than one. There's a couple. Um, people that do a little bit of hybrid. This is a Phobos stand and you'll see that when you use the builder everything comes in separate like that So you might want to just group it all up together given a name I'm not going to give it a name you grab the Phobos stand again CD controls here uh, We have the height so if you guys have ever wondered what this thing is This is what it does for photographers. It just allows them to freely move this the camera wherever they want This thing spins around uh, the Manfrotto head. Let's get up on this jam um, Pretty cool uh, is gonna allow you to pan Tilt is up there, 90 to 30. This is all very accurate, actually. And then you roll to go horizontal or vertical when you're taking stills. Um, so that's how a professional still head works. Uh, the Manfrotto 405 is a geared head, so you spin those little knobs and you can do these very fine adjustments. Uh, that's how high-end photographers are going to work. Uh, so we built this um, for you guys, this uh, DSS... Alpha Phobos stand is built very close to scale, at least close enough to, I think. Um, so pretty excited about that for the still world. And I have fun playing with it, honestly. And again, no textures down here, though they are in the scene. I'll show you maybe at the end where they actually are. So that's all that's really new for the camera stuff. Um, lighting, there's a lot of new stuff. Um, so we have our same uh, C stand rig uh, that's gonna emit light. And that's why it's in the lighting truck. Uh, and this here. Now you'll see that the stands now, I made all of the, um, these things, the tie downs, I should know the name because I've modeled all these like 20 times. Um, I made all the hardware gray so it doesn't like clash with your scene and just draw attention to itself. Um, and I've actually seen a couple companies, um, I forget, there's a big company that uses all, um, all gray for their stuff. So in here now as well, we have uh, a 12 by 12 frame and this one comes in backwards, um, but 
Now you just have this free floating, floating frame. You can turn it on. It's going to emit light uh, only in one direction again. And it has a grid. Uh, so I guess, oh no, I guess it's, yeah, it still is backwards, but whatever. So here's a grid. So it will control it a little bit. It's a little bit noisy when you do that, but it'll, you can do it. Uh, here's a 12 by 20. Again with a grid. Got, got an email uh, in the background. Uh, here's a 20 by 20. Uh, again, these are light. These will emit light. They will show up in reflections and they all have grids. So um, those are new, nice and quick. Just bring those in. A lot of times when you're working on big studio shoots, all you, you're just gonna be using those frames a lot of the times. And then you kind of like fake what goes in behind it. Let's bring in all of the new lights. Ah, so when we go in lights now, we're gonna starting to get a lot of lights in here. Um, so I had to organize them into folders. And eventually they might have to be folders in folders like airy tungsten, airy LED, airy HMI. There's a lot of lights, so we need to keep it organized. Eventually I'm actually gonna build a more robust uh, visual light selector, but for now the folder system is gonna work for everybody. It's nice and quick, it's universal. Um, between Windows and OS 10. there's no Linux for this, only for Maya. Um, there's a little, it's, it's kind of a program and pain in the butt, so I'm just gonna use the default OS. Navigator, we have an airy 2K is new. Um, if it's just the name, airy, to, airy <laughs> Airy, Airy Light 2K Plus with no anything, that means it goes onto a stand. And then dash hung means that it's upside down. And I don't have a great way of programming uh, that difference, so I've just made discrete different versions of the head. So let's bring that in, that's new. Um, so again, if you just bring in the light with nothing else, it just brings in the light, so that's pretty cool. Um, helpful if you just wanna have a quick light model to work with, this thing will emit light. Again, CD controls, so that's new. Put that over here. What else is new? Breezy, breezy is the same. Brown color, I'm not gonna bring these in. Eh, maybe I will, screw it. We got a beauty dish. Uh, and we have no. So if you do this, you gotta delete that if you if you can. I think the script actually takes care of it, but it's, it's nice to delete that. And we have the one with the reflector build. So this is for the stills people, but I mean, essentially these are gonna output light just like any other light, but you know, in the stills world, they only put it out for like 125, 125th of a second or whatever it is. It's, very, it's not very much time at all. Um, but these emit light. They're very accurate. Um, and they're modeled after the Braun Unilights. Uh, again, these are for the photographers. I can do the pro photos if you want. But honestly, guys, it's all the same shit. Like, it's no difference. Um, but I'll do it just for whatever. Uh, so those are the new still lights. Uh, Chimera. Oh, Pancake. Uh, we have... I would bring it in hung because a lot of the times you're going to use it like this. Uh, this is a fun one. Uh, this is kind of like our space light. Uh, and you can change sizes from small to medium to large. And uh, it pans and tilts, has light color, you can change the brightness, and it also has skirts. So you can skirt this thing in however you want. Maybe I'll leave this side open to you guys. So if you want to do a weird ass skirt like this, I mean, most people, most people are going to use it like that. Like you'd stick into it in a corner of a room and it only emits light this way. So we have this, that's new, um, pretty fun. Has all the sizes built into it. Trying to make that easy for everybody. Uh, a dado light, bring you in. Itty bitty dado light, works just like all the other lights, except it's tiny and it's a dado. Good for tabletop. Uh, this is new, um, the Source 4, a uh, very important workhouse, workhorse of the industry. And to change the degree, barrel is down here, 19 to 50. Um, light on and off, color, all that stuff is the same. Pan, tilt, good stuff. Um, I do have an iris and that iris will, you know, make a little, it'll start shrinking the size of the pattern. That works. Uh, I have not implemented these cuts into the the blades that come in. I actually haven't implemented that. So you're going to see them, but they, won't, they do nothing. Sorry, they're just there. They're placeholders. Um, and the iris, just so you know, the reason they're not implemented is because the iris and the cuts, they will show up when you render, but they don't show up in the viewport. So it's very slow to interactively add them in. I just need to keep uh, doing research into that and seeing if that's fixed. Does Arnold fix it? I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's an inherent uh, thing with um, Cinema 4D to not occlude. Anyway, that's behind the scenes stuff. Essentially, the uh, the iris works. You have to render to see it. And the top cut works. Uh, and those top cut and bottom cuts, all that stuff, that doesn't work right now. Um, but it is still a very good model for a Source 4, and you'll be able to use it um, for Source 4 stuff. And the beam coming out of it's very accurate from where it is in the world, and that's, that's kind of what's important. The cuts... Eh, it's kind of important, but I, I haven't figured that out yet. Kino flows, uh, just so you guys who haven't seen them yet, um, here is a, we have a bulb, two foot bulb. No, hit that by accident. We have um, Kino flow four foot bulb singles. So these are fun. Um, go play with those, check them out. Uh, they're a little noisy. Kino flows, the way that they work right now, I'm gonna bring one of the banks in 
It's called a fixture. Uh, they call them remote fixtures. That's why they're called that. So these are actually emitting light like with GI. And then this piece of metal here is actually a reflector. Like it's going to actually reflect light back. It's just really noisy. This is a very accurate physical sim simulation of a breezy, or a breezy of a kino flow, but it just uh, it's very noisy when you render it. So I'm considering just like implementing this. You'll so you'll see the bulbs, but really it'll just be a square or a rectangular area light instead, which would just be a cleaner render. It's essentially what the light you would get like if you put diffusion over this. Um, but maybe let me know how you think about that. If you use the kino flows, they're really good. You can change the bank size, like this, but. Uh, they're a little noisy when you render them, at least for the settings I've been using. So I'm not that happy with how they output light. But as far as showing where a Kino flow should be and having it be scale and all that stuff, that's great. But the implementation of how the light coming out of it, I'm not that happy with it. Um, I think that's it. Mo Richardson space lights. Um, so that's it for that. Let's do. Uh, we have one more thing. So let's bring in um, our Shimera Hung, and I have one new stand. Or I have two new stands in here. I've got a combo Mega Boom. So let's bring that in open. So this is a Manfrotto Mega Boom, just like you would think. Again, this, the new stands are gray. Uh, you can change them if you want, but I think gray makes a lot of sense actually now. So the stand goes up, you can select the boom itself, and the boom can extend out 12 feet from the base, I think is the measurements that I, I found. Um, and it, like a techno crane, kind of can pan and um, boom down and up. And photography use this a lot, and if you're doing a lot of like extensive breezy work, this is like a Another very common light or stand to use. So we have that. That is new. And I'll bring in a T12. And this was a request to put it on a turtle stand. So now we have a turtle stand for our lights that are being bounced, you know, for bouncing on the floor. So that's new. Um, other than that, uh, grip truck, this stuff is all the same, I think. Uh, just some updated like stands and stuff. So the stand is again gray. Stuff should all mostly match. Um, so that's fun. It's a fun little new addition kit. Not that the flag is new. Location, I haven't added anything. I haven't added anything. Uh, and I also am going to be giving you, uh, or I'm building what's called a location pack. That's not the quite, wor quite the right word for it, but uh, it is essentially going to allow you to build a room with a table, with chairs, with furniture, with shelves. Um, you'll be able to build an entire house, f first floor of a house, for instance, in about one to two minutes versus it being like, you know, 10 to 30 minutes. Uh, I built tools that are going to make it like way faster, I think, especially if you've gone through all the training and you kind of understand how I build rigs and how, Cin how Cinema 4D works. I have basically um, tried to design something that's extremely fast. So maybe we'll look at that in the next video as I continue to build it. That is going to be separate than Cine Designer because it has to deal with sets. So moving forward, uh, all the cameras, the lights, um, that stuff is part of Cine Designer, and I'm going to continue to update R1 until I feel like R1 has enough that most people can use it for almost all of their jobs. Uh, and then we're going to start talking about um, additional plugins that do other things, like, for instance, build sets, that sort of thing. But um, if you're still, if you're in the R1 program now, uh, you'll be getting all that stuff because I need you guys to try it out for me. But eventually, uh, the set building stuff, props, if I spend the money to develop some human rigs that are going to be a little bit nicer, a set of cars, a set of stuff that's like designed to go and fit in the system. Just turn it on. It renders perfectly. It's rigged to work for, for a Cine Design and Previs. Um, that stuff's going to be separate than Cine Designer. Cine Designer is for the lights and cameras. Uh, anything else is going to be separate, but likely you're going to be able to try it. So that's a look at the new stuff for Cine Designer R1 Build 2. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. Um, depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching it right away, it's be, it'll be available this Friday. And if you bought it, you should be able to log into the website and essentially just re-download it, uh, re-download the whole plugin. I would take the old plugin folder, rename it something else and put it somewhere, but take it out of your plugins folder and put this new one in. It's a whole new build. It's a whole new script uh, and it's new assets. All the old assets have been updated. So the old ones, um, you can keep it. You could, but but I wouldn't actually. I don't. I don't think. It, I don't think they're gonna play well together. So um, delete the old folder, or, or just take it out of there. Keep it safe somewhere in case you want it. Uh, but build two, guys. Build two is out. Um, it's gonna make things a little bit nicer, more lights, um, and really happy with how things are going so far. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.